No, right? Very exciting. Nearly as exciting as this game number one with our casters. It's Captain SVG. That's right. Very intense game that's coming up is elimination. And this music fits that perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, just just for the record, I did not ask for this one. <laughs> I, I, I just want to clear my name before this game starts. But this is a hype match between two teams who have perhaps been the most volatile of this tournament. The highs have been high. The lows have been lows. The in-betweens have been in-between. The real heroes, the fake heroes, the wins, the losses, the tears of joy, the tears of sadness. But it all comes to an end for one of these teams as only one can continue on to reap the reward of having to play the two-time TI champions in an, a lower bracket match. What a reward that is. 30 seconds. Well, you also get a little bit more money, a little bit more points, even if you do lose to Spirit. But that's right. We've got Falcons, Bet Boom, Spirit, and one more team. Will it be Gaming Gladiators, the most dominant team of last year, won the most tournaments anyway, or is it going to be Extreme, the best Chinese team right now? And the winners of uh, that initial group stage they did very well for themselves in Group B, nine and five. Jin Q going to be pulled back in. Still has some more leap charges, though, obviously, so he's good to go. No first blood just yet. Extreme Gaming will get three bounties, though. Another axe throw. All right. Going to force Jin Q into a lot of region here. If he doesn't want to go to base, you already got the leaps out. It's a minor lane victory for game, but you gave up three runes, so you kind of give it all back. I think XG are happy with the economic damage here. Yeah, particularly if uh, you're already in a certain matchup that should be very favorable for you lane-wise, right? This Lina versus Pango. Yeah, I would expect XM to dumpster. Okay, uh, well, that was a big miss, but yeah, he's missed two CS pretty. That was not a good first good wave for him. No. And Quinn known for his early lane prowess. How he snowballs these matchups. But this should be a good lane for XM. Yeah, your Lena versus a melee hero. It is kind of a cheap melee hero. You know, it is the Pangolier. This hero gets out of almost any matchup and can play Dota. So that lane dominance might not be that big a factor. He also has Empower to buff him up. This was an old school OG combination that worked really well for them. Yep. And he has Venge to throw in some extra debuffs and give him the swap safe in the fights. So this is not just a, you know, island pango. This is a pango buffed up by the team that can easily get on top of the Lina, deal a huge amount of physical damage and control him with the roll. And there's not a lot to control the pango roll in this game. So this pick could prove to be pretty deadly, especially since it is on Quinn. And he has shown to be the pango master. That's right. That's now what he's known for. Uh, I'm glad we clicked away from that mid lane. I'm not sure I was cringing the entire time that just yeah, XM. Watching XM miss so much CS he's hurt. Getting, he's getting bodied. Yeah. He'll go back there soon. But these lanes are shaping up to be very strong for gaming right now, despite the rune loss. And Rashio is Radiant just pulling this melee hero, but he... Well, they do lose a courier down there. Jinq up to his usual shenanigans. Putting on his best, best Monkey King impression. Kun will pull away for the water rune. So he will not miss any CS here. In Tons of reach in to help deal with the uh, constant dragon slave harassment. Making this lane look easy. Oh, there we go. Now we're cooking. Goddamn, XM. Four to nice in a row. Went from nothing to four. X success. Final hit from Dorachio will claim first blood. Man, did he just high roll on that? That looked close. Got it all. Nice first blood to pick up her for the troll. We have seen Gaiman go back to this mag anytime they can get it. It feels like that, that is their de facto offlaner. They will choose for Ace if they can get their hands on it. Why do you think that is? I think it is one of, I mean, I feel like they have been forced into this stunner offlane meta that they don't want to play, but they're kind of left with no choice. Yeah, yeah. And I think mag is the one of those that is a stunner offlaner who can dictate the fights while at the same time buffing up the team. 
which was a big component of what Ace was doing for this squad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and at the same time, Ace can just be that secondary carry. So Mag like fits in this weird space, if you think about it, right? He's a buffer. He's a carry hero. He's a team fight starter. He does a little bit of it all. And so I think it just fits Ace better than like these Centaur Marses that they only, they kind of have to choose one of those paths. Yeah, they're a little bit more pure in what their skill set is, right? And it's also just something that helps the other two cores scale a lot. So I think it's, it fits what game we want to do with this, you know, three cores all being strong. And they played this mag troll earlier and it looked pretty good for them. They rolled that game. Uh, Dorachu got so damn fat. So this is a, a lineup they're very comfortable with this tournament at least. And XG have given it to them. They're tempting fate. I would be very curious. He, he went to 201 build, but I'd be very curious if there was some sort of build that involves maxing out in power early uh, and giving it to both himself as well as the Terra Blade, right? Because Terra Blade has uh, such high base damage and stuff. I feel like you just don't win the trades as much as you think you're going to win them. Yep. Maybe. And you are back with the meta, but Tofu, Tofu might just die before he gets off any damage. Lotus He's guiding him back nicely with all this regen. He burned through everything he had. Lotus is very fires, all of that. Oh, Celery cutting across for the extra kill here. And they'll get it. So nice. double kill for Ace. Nice little pickup that Celery can make that move. Just off bot lane going so damn well. And again, anytime you can kill this life steer in lane, you're going to feel great about the progression of the game. Sets him back. All his timings get thrown off a little. We're seeing Ame try to find his hero pool this turn. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the games have hit. Some of them have missed. Again, this matchup is... It's a volatile one. Both these teams trying to find their identity in this current patch. Level 6 approaching here. The Pangolier. And XM is ahead on XP. Did it eventually pull ahead in this lane? Though I think Quinn did some work on the, the first two or three or four minutes there. Yeah. We'll see what he can make with that first rolling thunder. Again, very free rolling thunder game. Your XG, you have to think about where this spell goes and what it does for Gaiman. And not give up too many freebies to it as you try and get the levels for your supports. Scale into that mid game where the E team Marana can shine. Ame's most played heroes. Monkey King, Morphling, Terror Blade, Faceless Void, Phantom Lancer, then Sven Spectre. <laughs> that's, that's a player right there. Laguna is ass and TP out. <laughs> Showed him. Well, I mean, if it's a short cooldown, <laughs> might as well do the damage, I Got guess. Got him. I mean, he does not want to get Rolling Thunder there. It's a heads up play, but it looks absolutely hilarious. Ace doesn't have the mana to skewer away, but Ame's not going to keep diving. The Monkey King Morphling Void. I think when I think of Ame, I think of Faceless Void. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the hero that he has the most success on next yeah. to Sven. He used to play Morphling a lot back in some of those early TIs. Yeah. Well, he's an interesting carry player when you really think about his career. And he's still here fighting it out trying to prove himself once more claim a title could have just been out there i was playing and streaming but he chose to right. go back to the game more fuel for my Lena, fire. continuing to pull ahead here wisdom runes get exchanged and quiet early game we have not seen this rolling thunder go to use so Maybe Gaiman are happy just playing a slower game with the mag lineup, but generally they want a player on the Pangolier and Snowball. Support duo not necessarily doing them any favors in that department, but it will be a departure from their usual style with it and give XG some freedom and maybe try and connect the arena. They can get it up. You can't really gank the top lane, right? Lifestealer lane is pretty whatever. Bottom lane has Mars, which is fine, but then there's also the Marana, which you're probably not going to get your hands on. I think you can gank this guy if you get the the six on mag. Yes. 
It's, it's not out of the question at all. They're going to contest the power rune. Try and land the stun. Shield crash forward helps him take some of this damage. The Terra Blade is there to push back the Lina when they needed it because Quinn took a lot of damage there. Spots the Lina now. Hits him once rolling thunder. Tofu continues to get the damage in with all of these heroes diving. Good attempt by XM to try and hit him as he came out of the rolling thunder, but he was just screwed there. Not much that uh, he could do and not much it seems that Extreme could do about it either. On the downsides, the Elder Titan, I guess. I mean, that just feels bad if you're XG. And you pick this Lena into the Pango and you're just letting him roll on you and kill you. The supports can't do anything about it. Now you get all your leaps Still forced dead. out. Double leaps and dies anyway. I mean, this is the support player on the Pango that I thought wasn't going to come. It comes a little later, but gets the job done. A couple quick kills. Get that rune and push this Pango towards defusal. This game Dias looks middle tower. pretty middle scary tower. for XG does not have skewers he just dead he does have that little sheep neutral item tofu's coming Amazing over to help him out so never mind like... take a stack power is the four terror blade hell yeah feels good oh he didn't power never mind tofu just... feels bad yeah you've been seeing things today tofu just back and forth between lanes is roaming terror blade Dyer's middle tower plus 10 attack. they gonna be able to execute this it would be quite the move this support duo could actually kill the lena the help of quinn they certainly have him that's washbuckle does so much yeah, damage, that was man that minus armor compared to that with, with that Dyer's physical damage that's too easy I don't know. If you're XG, you, you gotta make them work harder for it. They're gonna TP in the Mars for the arena. It has to connect. I mean, the best you're gonna get is one support with this yeah, it's three hero good. rotation. It doesn't feel good enough, right? Because the Pango is getting what he wants, your Lina's not. And these support kills just don't really matter that much for gaming. The game plan's behind the three cores. They're, they're gonna start to empower everybody here and just take off in the network in that like 15 to 25 period. If they ever get a Roshan, the game just explodes and you're not man fighting this troll with lifesteal in this game. I yeah. just don't see that ha happening. You don't have much help to skew that matchup. If anything, the troll has more help. He has the swap plus the wave. He has empower on his side. He has a Sunder that can bail out. What does Ahmet have to help him in this game? Moonlight Shadow. Is under attack. Yeah, it's not particularly impressive. Jin Q again leaps, still dies. Quinn is just hunting down heroes left and right. I think this game shows sometimes the, the trap that these teams fall into where I'm not saying this wasn't the case for XG, but you look at these two drafts, I feel like even if Gaiman's Radiant's draft were worse, which I don't attack. think it is, it has a very clear direction on its game plan. Mm. And I look at XG's and I, like, what is the overall synergistic game plan with these five heroes? Is it to win team fights? Is it to control Roshan? Is it to push waves and pick somebody off? Is it to outscale you? Is it to buff up the carry and let him 1v5? I, I don't really know what it is, right? It's just, let's like hope something happens play. here and we just outplay them. You've talked about how Extreme is probably the most inconsistent team. Uh, everybody here at Dream League is there. Do manage to get a, a nice arena that's going to catch two supports this time. Do you think some of this uh, inconsistency could be just a lost uh, a, a vision when it comes to draft? I think so. I think some of the drafts have just been wonky. Hey. Like some of the wonky ones have worked, but it's also them just outplaying people. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to judge. But I think it's one of the most important characteristics of a team when you want to go deep in tournaments is that you start to build identity through your lineups and know what you're playing for. Because otherwise you're going to go up against the team that does and you're going to get absolutely demolished. Oh, I mean, it's getting demolished right now. Yeah, this is just, again, an easy move when you have this RP threat. You didn't even have to use it. Yep, yep. And then Dorachi will come in and backstab a tower. 
dire structures are fortified. So uh, when Radiant's you talk about uh, the, the vision attack. when it comes to draft, like, can you give me a, a, an example? What is Game and Gladiators Dyer's lineup? What did attack. they draft? What did they want to accomplish with this lineup? Is under attack. I mean, they want, I mean, this team is a team that's struggling, so they want to get heroes that are enabling how they want to play right now. Magnus being a big attack. one. But then if you're going to first pick this mag and you're going to build around the mag, you want to play Magnus Dota. Okay. Right, you want to put Ace in a position where he has a strong game and he can influence the fight by going in, RP skewering, if there's no interrupt. And if they play to counter that type of gameplay, then you have heroes that can take benefit of the empower and use it to outskill your opponents or force early Roshans. And they pick supports that will help that game plan, right? Venge helps mail off the mag on a box initiation. It also helps him force early Roshan. Terrorblade is one of the better stackers in this meta. The Illusions is one of the things that makes this hero viable in support, which means you can mass stack camps, clear through those with power later if you need to fall back to a plan B. Like these little things add up, right? It makes sure you can enable your game plan. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Empower, make sure that this troll Pango are not gonna lose the late game man fights in there. Right. So all these things, it gives you purpose behind what you're doing with your heroes in this game. And it gives you a lot to fall back on. That's why I just feel like this game feels a lot more comfortable for gaming Radiant's right now. Whereas, I, actually, I think you just have to, again, try and outplay them. Just find big team fights with the arena, which we, we've seen it happen a couple of times. Really. Mars can just carry games. You get if you get good arena catches with the Venge in it that you can't swap someone out. You throw down that ET spirit. There's an Earth Splitter going through. Amp up the Lena damage, and Arrow Lance on the spear target. Okay, there's some like you got some stuff going. Yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't really get going in the laning phase, and now they're playing from behind. A 3,000 net worth lead for Game of Gladiators. As Ame is trying to work towards his Radiance, his Lina is doing a bit of recovery here. XXS and DY Jin Q all looking for a smoke move here. Right time to make this move, apparently. Might just cast your gaming gladiators a little bit out of sort, mid pause. Get a little hydration going. I always find that funny whenever <laughs> it's happened so often that that teams pause and then s somebody will say a reason that isn't actually true. I've seen it so many times where like two di two players will say two different reasons when they pause, or in this case. Celery throws out a lag or he crashed or something. Calling him a liar? No, I just. Calling him a liar, Austin? I think it's funny. First, you say Yatoro's a trash player. <laughs> and now you say what? Celery's a liar. I, I was not one of the people in the green room saying what that. What next, Austin? It's all the other talent who were disgracing what next? Yatoro's name. Lewis Hamilton's a fluke. <laughs> Why are we going back to that <laughs> one again? <laughs> I, I only casually know him. I don't know enough to keep keep having this be a topic of conversation for us. That's why I enjoy it. Also, why do you keep going back to Lewis Hamilton? It's a good name. <laughs> it's Middle a Town good name. Yeah, if I had a kid, it's I would name him Lewis name. Hamilton. So, that would be his middle name. Dyer's What's wrong with Max for step? And his, his real name would be like Radiant's Garth Middle Brooks. Tower so it'd be like Garth attack. Lewis Hamilton Brooks. <laughs> That's a name right there, dude. That is. No, it's a Ooh. strong American name. That's right, right there. God damn. Invisibility. So what's wrong with Max Verstappen? A little wisdom runes. <laughs> I think that speaks for itself. <laughs> a little wisdom runes stolen here. She just keep that in mind. Sheever's that watching. Quinn. Gotta keep the streak. Chasing <laughs> after. Uh, the, you can't go through the secret shop, man. But he did manage to little, do so with a little, little belly bump. bump. Just, just pat his belly and then go back. But the catch is there. The Cobalt laid into him. Get him, Cobalt. God damn, can we bring up... Oh, we can't bring up that Destiny, huh? Jinq did not get ensnared. Maybe the ensnares will be saved. Oh, jeez. under attack. So much damage, man. Empower Swashbuckle with Diffusal Play. All right, now Gleipnir was up. That's what I wanted to get to. Gleipnir's up. Maybe Extreme Gaming can make a move off of that. Unfortunately, they cannot. Not a move that results in a kill anyway. 
Are you trying to find the Cobalt's <laughs> damage? Yeah. It doesn't show up. This is the most research I've seen you do in a game. But why doesn't it show up, actually? It just says he did zero. Probably because he They need more buffs, damage. dude. <laughs> the Cobalt needs more buffs. I like when those Cobalt's get active. It's nice, you know. Why? <laughs> it just looks... It's like a little mini micro thing, you know? That's how you can tell you're in the zone. You get that extra little value. Squeeze every bit you can. I mean, I will agree with that when people use Cobalts to, like, scout. See, like, dodge the Centaur stock, you know? And then you're dead. Where is he? Uh-oh. Uh X-Hand, they still got him. So, Blinder timing is a big one here for XG. This is, uh, I think, the absolute correct item choice from XM. You have to Radiant's activate this Lina, and you, you need to set attack. up more for your supports in this Radiant's game. This brings this lineup together more, right? Like, it gives you something to play for the team fights, which is try and set up these arrows and these stops into Earth Splitters, which is, I think, what you have to do here at XG. Fallen. So, Gleipner helping you there a lot. Yeah, when they were just reliant on Mars to kind of, like, set up everything for a support duo, it's, uh, it doesn't feel oh. great. You also like, need to think about this troll in this game and how you can skew this life stealer troll matchup into your favor. So anything that helps kite the troll or helps Ame disengage is gonna feel nice as well. Yeah. Halberds, four stabs, E blades, Yules. Anything you can pick up along those lines later is gonna feel good. Even Greaves, it will be a Yules for Jin Q. Radiance for Ame, so some extra evasion. Side benefit. But the Aegis is going to game in here. That was pretty much unpreventable, I think. I just don't think you're ready to fight at this time if you're at XG. Yeah, especially if you're behind. Which means they're going to get an Aegis for Quinn. And he's going to get an Aghanim Scepter. So... His offensive power is crazy strong, and he's got a second life to back it up, so it's not even like he's uh, under the gun when uh, Extreme activate that Mars at any point. XG just need to protect the Lina. They have Infest to do it, they have Arena, they have Stomp, they have Moonlight Shadow, but you cannot let this Magnus find your backline in this game. It's going to absolutely decimate your team. Magnus and the Pango. I, I don't know how they stop both of them. That's, yeah, that's the tough part. You don't have the Rolling Thunder control, and this Mag's Radiant's reach is insane is with Harpoon attack. already done. <laughs> like, maybe the Yules on Jin Q can help you a bit because you lack that instant stun in something like a Rubik, but if you have Yules, you can, you know, leap Yules him before the Skewer comes out, potentially. Die. Yeah. Could be a big play. Also lets you aggressively use this mag if you ever see him set up for an arrow chain. Because remember, he doesn't have BKB. So this is actually a period where XG wouldn't mind fighting if you can fi somehow find that initiation. But maybe, I mean, there is Venge Swap at the same time. Nothing's gonna be easy in this game. We'll be gaming with the smoke as they show on two lanes here. Well, the smoke goes bottom. This kill would be really big if they can get it. He is just about to get his BKB. Got off the ultimate. Moonlight Shadow will help him kite as will the stun. So, huge kill. Very dead hero here. Great pickup. That'll delay the BKB just a little bit more. That, that was a play where Duraccio and Quinn were both showing while that smoke went bottom. Basically saying, we don't think you're going to jump me with all these heroes off the map. XG yeah. took the risk. And the risk paid off. That could easily be a play where there's smoke behind Daracho and you just get RP'd there and you die. Sure. So there was some risk in that, and, but maybe actually feel like they're in a position Dyer's where they rather take those than not attack. with the Dyer's long range Lina. And they're rewarded with a Daracho kill. That Aegis on the Pangolier. Maybe too far of a push for the troll. And that smoke misses. At the same time, you get the Tormentor XG making some moves in this game. What need have I for invisit? Oh. The next move, Wisdom Dyer's Rune, Tormentor. Ame pops out, trying to stop Ace from grabbing the Wisdom Rune. He's going to get skewered, so that's great for Ame. Stays on top of the mag. The arrow actually does hit, despite the uh, creeps being around there. That was I guess they're aggressive. Answers. Never mind. Very aggressive. And the Yule's instantly paying off for Jin Q here. The supports are finding some decent farm in this game. Yeah, they are. Feels like Gaiman are, I don't want to say they're stumbling on the map, but 
we have certainly seen a lot cleaner Aegis periods from this team. Those two big core kills that are going to slow you down. XXS Blink BKB. I think what's interesting is that they've made a lot of these, uh, these last couple of moves have been with Alcmars. Yeah, that's, that's huge, honestly. If you're not dependent on him to make something happen. Yeah. You got the farmer's BKB. Does that BKB make a big difference? It's nice. You're not going to get 100 to 0 by Pangolier. Yeah, I mean, it'll kind of help him survive the initiation that he goes in and, and does, and maybe that helps him scale better and kind of ensures that he survives through fights and gets these later Octarines and such that we've seen. I mean, if you can play these fights in a way where you have BKBs, you ignore the Pango's impact, and you just jump the troll in the venge. It, it could be a route Radiant to go. Are scanning. Dyer's top tower I just feel like attack. that's not what Amar would have got. And when I'm looking at Amar's, thinking WWAD. Hmm. What would Amar do? Allies. Oh, he would have been pushing forward. Drop some mantles by now. Got him on the harpoon. Yule, the Yule stops that one. Nice illusion block, though, preventing that arrow chain. Yep. But we're seeing the power of this item. It's really good itemization from Jin Q. Dyer's Once you have the BKB on the bag, it's a different story. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Unfortunately, nice. getting away from fights isn't good enough. Game of Gladiators will push their advantage Dyer's while they uh, age just ex expiring. Ocean Q, can he make the jump? <laughs> Gets the long jump over the corner. Find time. They got to their Lina BKB. And they have taken a net worth lead in this game. Yeah, that, that's uh, surprising to me how much the net worth has been brought back in the favor of Extreme. I just naturally assumed that this Magnus, you know, TB Pango troll, like, felt like they were going to be doing a healthy amount of uh, creep hitting or all around the map very efficiently. Yeah, I think I think I would prefer to have Tofu a bit higher net worth here. I think he could have soaked up a bit more, but he was running trying to join the plays. If those plays miss, then you fall behind. Smoke with the BKB timings for XG. This is big if they can land it. They want a core target. They want to separate that target from the Venge or at least control the Venge in the arena with whoever they go on here. Arrow to scout things out. Spirit also pushing forward, seeing some heroes. Yeah, XXS just doesn't see enough here. Again, you do not want to just single target jump one of these guys and then end up in a situation where Pango gets a free fight and the Venge swap saves that target. So instead of pushing into them, XM pushes in mid and you're going to see if Game and Gladiators will try and chase after them. It almost feels like Gaiman just played for the next Roche. Radiant's bottom tower. Yeah, I mean, why not? They, like, they have no problem with this game being a stalemate, right? In theory, yeah. I mean, this type of game will always come down to the teamfight execution. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Top I mean, I just is under assume attack. when you have Dyer's one of the biggest team fight spells in Rolling Thunder and then Dyer's two BKB piercing disables, you're pretty well set up for late game engagements, you know? Yeah, you have, I mean, you have to be confident playing these late game fights here if you're gaming. So patience, not the worst thing to have right now. Thrash is going to show, do you want to spear him back? I mean, he has Radiant a BKB. You need to perfectly and quickly execute those spells and kill him right away. I mean, that you don't, he gets up BKB ults, his team follows up. That's all the power of the Venge right there. XXS not taking that. If there's yeah. no save in this game, he 100% just spear arenas and back. And even if he gets spells out, okay, you disengage. Once more, he does not see enough. Game has been a stalemate for the last five minutes. 
BKB done for Ace. That's a big one. Yeah, I feel like that that BKB is a lot more impactful than the, it uh, definitely can be. one. If he finds this Lena, he finds the life stealer in an RP. It's very well could end the fight. A huge smoke wrap around from XG. Positioning is key here. Gaming gladiators are sitting up on the high ground, or were not going to break it right away. Shin Q are going to get some information. Oh, X Nix has got all these heroes inside of the arena. He's going to try and pull one, protect himself. What a great earth splitter on top of that one. The RP does go out with the rolling thunder. Duraccio laying into this mark, but he's taking enough. a lot thanks to the bulwark, thanks to the invest. XXS is too big to be brought down. Not even Quinn can finish him off as he misses the last swashbuckle. XXS, I, that is the absolute dream. They saw that OBS and they clumped Dyer's for a second and he gets four in that arena. I mean, that is everything you want. Both saving supports locked in there. Radiance ET Spirit on top of them. Attack. Earth Splitter hits three here. And that RP is okay, but you get the infest off and you're just hitting Mars Shield the whole time. That matchup is honestly awful for Troll. If that's all he's stuck on Radiant and there's no break. Are fortified. Perfect team fight for XG. What a difference it would have been. Like the matter of seconds there. They go uh, like two seconds earlier. Tofu's sitting on that high ground. He breaks the smoke there. Oh, oh yeah, they don't get that that clean initiation because they have you know equal vision. I mean that that angle was everything yeah. for XG. It gave him just enough. You get broken there. You get reflected. Suddenly you're getting three or four man RP. Radiant are scanning. And the BKBs plus the Rage is enough that the Panga Roll, the Panga Roll cannot reliably win you the fights on its Dyer's own. Dyer's middle tower yeah. is under attack. The Mag Troll have to contribute here. And Great. Success. Great execution for Extreme. Puts them back in the lead when it comes to net worth. Will it be enough for Roshan? No RP. Arena back up. Oak immediately breaks on this camp. Immediately Quinn just jumps in. Trying to reveal the heroes that were in those trees. They got a BKB out of XXS and the Moonlight Shadow. And the patience to hold Arena there. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Wants to save it for when this Roche is up. Commit the BKB to get out, but that'll give time for RP to come back up, so Ace is ready to go. He can also go fishing if he really wants to, to risk it or commit the BKB. Going up the side, this time Tofu is sitting on the high ground. Yeah. Oh, Zermina gets first, he better off the Sunder, that brings XX as low, and now that's not a problem for the troll. Duraju is trying to make his way down from the high ground and get on top of these heroes. The BKB from XM keeping his distance from Quinn, actually laying into Quinn, healthy amount of damage, but he's got to keep out of the hands of this troll. His movement speed is keeping him one step ahead. Duraju has old. not hit a hero with this entire team fight, pretty much. He has just been left chasing after ghosts. Quinn, he puts himself in a corner, and that's going to be the death of him. Jirachi still running away from Ame, who continues. Got him in the open wounds, but he's like, whatever, man. You can go free. We killed four of Game and Gladiators, and we can head back for the Roshan now. The arena placement caused him some problems, but the biggest thing is Ace wants the Lina there. He gets the RP on Lina, and he gets instantly Yules by Jin-Q. Did not commit the BKB. I thought that was the whole that. point of the BKB. Yeah, I thought it was it, just like the, you know, like the whole Mag versus Rubik thing. It was like, you know. had his number. And by the time he gets that skewer on the lean off, like the damage is already done. That play is stalled out enough. You can't connect the troll onto him. XM survives that fight. You oh my God, out. he actually went for it. Celery completes that TP. He will complete that was insane. The game is just crumbling here. And not connect these team fights. And it's another fight where you have these saves for the cores, but the fight is starting on the supports. You're going on the Terrorblade, even though he gets off a great Thunder and you kill the Mars. It's not really how you want your lineup to, to function here if the damage isn't going into the Lena and the Life Stealer. I mean, XG just now playing. Your song has fallen to the dark. Immortality. And perhaps taking advantage of this support terribly. Dyer's it's one of the weaknesses of this hero on the support role. 
It allows you to get a later pick carry that can take the game over, but his team fight contribution can be underwhelming compared to a lot of other supports. Yeah. Like the Marana ET are doing more than this Terrorblade in the fight right now. Radiant the Reflection Illusion is not is anything attack. crazy this game versus Lifesteal or Lina, and you're probably only hitting one. Yeah. And you're not going to get that kind of Sunder contribution that he did Radiant's in that last fight. You're not going to get that every time. No, that that was like peak Sunder opportunity. <laughs> yeah, that and was it pretty still went bad. And for me, the, the terrain of that fight was so bad. Like, Durachi was just Radiant running around. He literally fire. did a full circle trying to get on top of somebody melee for him. He got some range hits in on XM, but he, he didn't actually get the chance to hit a hero and snare it and beat it down 100 0 like normal. Counter blinked. Nice play by XXS. I mean, I wonder how bad it is for him if he ends up in a situation where he gets to be, can be alt lock on the lifestealer with like vengeance wave going through it in power. It can't be that bad if you still have RP on. Yeah, it's, it's it's gonna get bad though because now you've got Aghanim Scepter on Life Stealer, so now it's bad. That is that this, this matchup is so different when you have something like that kind of tool to use. So they're probably still gonna look for this Lena, but you're definitely not looking for her when she has Aegis. So you're ratting the map right now. At the Gleipnir, he got him on the Gleipnir. Damn. Great work from XM. Stops the TP and Ace. I mean. No way out of this one, really. He's got to pop the BKB and make a break for it, but no way out. I mean, even if you did manage to somehow slip this, you are going to be deep on the enemy side of the map with no TP out. Making a play bottom on the troll. <laughs> they just ignore Celery because there's a better target at hand. There's that Aghanim Scepter. Ult for ult, one counters the other. Ame hops inside and takes him for a ride. And that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote right there, boy. All right, well, extreme. Time to uh, time to force Game of Gladiators into checkmate, maybe. Hit that high ground and see if they can get a buyback out. I really thought this lineup would have more steam, but he have not been able to win a single team fight in XG. Just, just straight out playing them on the little things, it feels like. Yeah. yeah. These stomps, these Yules, the, the infest timings, the arenas from XXS. Everything has been on point here. I mean, we haven't seen a single skewer back into troll killing that hero. Yeah, exactly. Like, we haven't seen a single skewer back. We haven't seen a two or three man RP. We haven't seen the troll lock on to a leaner life still in the fight. Yep. We haven't Dyer's seen this rolling thunder really be too effective because there isn't. Like either you can use it to force out the initial wave of stuff from XG or you go in with the troll mag and you save that rolling thunder. It's usually you want the rolling thunder to go in first, but like how does Quinn start these fights, I guess? First Moonlight Shadow plus some very fast heroes. It's been difficult for him. They're in trouble. Radiant are scanning. XG snowballing this game, and they have a big frontliner with this Shiva's done. 4,000 HP on a Shiva's BKB Mars with that bulwark. That is a hard target to go on. I mean, you need this Pango Basher. That is a necessary item in this game. You're gonna hope you land some good ones. XM's gonna go from having an Aegis to having a Satanic. So no easy kills. Kills are so tanky. On the Lena for Game of Gladiators. They do have a swap, of course, and they're gonna use it now. First life goes down. XXS makes his presence known. Arena wants to keep his BKB, trying to tank up kill Jirachu. Got him with the RP with the tool bump with the Infest. He's on the troll right now, and he actually dies to Ame coming out of that Infest. He just bursted down the troll. He has no buyback, so Quinn has to do all of the lifting here, but he just can't do enough damage by himself. Double buyback from Game, and they need oh, to come they in here with the Yules. Again, but the Yules again and again, they just keep on countering Ace's contribution to a team fight. Another buyback, but again, how are you going to be able to do this without your primary damage dealer? Jin Q has had 
perhaps the world's best training regimen against Magnus of any player in Dota history. <laughs> that is true. This man has had many times to learn. <laughs> I've seen, I've been beat by better Magnuses than you. Yeah, you ain't no collapse, son. Now that man beat me, but I have been practicing. And it adds up. Those little things over your career add up. Oh, yeah. Like, you get more ready for him. You think about him more. And he has been on point with the anti-Magnus Technologies game. And it makes a huge difference. It makes Ace think about every single jump. Do I have to pre-BKB? Yeah. Awesome. If you don't have it, it just hasn't been landing. And it's a big deal. It feels like for Gaiman who need displacement to start to win these fights. Now, that was an Aegis that got swapped in. Remember how that fight started. So you don't have that this time if you're XG. They're gonna make an aggressive move, try and find this bottom who's been so damn annoying. I'll get it. Even just taking the numbers advantage. XG still wanna fight. Yeah, it seems like they're still down for it. No RP. Stop playing. Oh, yeah. oh Arena on to three. Hands the Pango. He's gonna be Got caught. Oh, look at the turn splitter coming in. Only hit Celery though. Being fast on to the troll. Once again, Duraccio. He gets the ult off at the end of it this time around. So he will manage to get a couple hits in. But he's just overwhelmed by the tankiness of this extreme gaming lineup. He can't kill anything anymore. And RP comes up as the mag goes down. So that's all she wrote there. Oh, no Quinn couldn't even finish off XX. Ah, oh, gets him. And one for the stat line. He gets a smile at least. Yeah. As he continues to roll on here. Didn't and even die. he lived. Oh, well, boy, who lived? that was maybe the best thing that happened for gaming in the last 15 minutes of that game because yeah, it would just went downhill fast. They had a solid lead. They had the first Roshan. And then you put the Aegis on the Pango. Duraccio dies top. Ace dies bottom on that Wister rune. Your Aegis period yields nothing extra.